This painting is called On, So I Will. It's derived from something I thought to myself, then said in an earlier video. Art goes on, so I will. Just some context. This is the first painting of my new canvas paper pad. It's 9 by 12 inches. My previous one was 12 by 16 inches, so this is quite a downsize in some ways. When I unboxed it this morning, I was scared about what I had gotten myself into. The price really made it seem like a good idea, aside from the challenge of putting myself up to it. I, I really, when I took it, I was like, oh god, this is like Mona Lisa small. Have you ever seen the Mona Lisa? They say it's actually quite small, so the fact that it's like blown up and replicated when you see the real thing, you would be probably taken aback. Not that I've seen it personally. But anyway, this turned out beautifully. Mona Lisa small, beautiful, yes. I really had no reason to be so intimidated. Even considering this is a first page, and from the artistic perspective, first pages are normally cursed, awkward, but that's me every day, so. Everything went very smoothly, from the concept sketch to the process of the painting itself. This concept is one I almost did on the last page of my 12 by 16 canvas pad. I'm glad I saved it for this. Although, and this is something I just need to work on in general, rendering the fingers. I love hands and fingers. There's something magical about the detail of fingers, the delicacy of them, how vital they are, to me at least, and what I do. I joke with myself, it's sort of an inside joke, because nobody else, nobody else gives a fuck, <laughs> that I have artisanal hands, or like my hands are meant for art. These are, these are very much art hands. But, on the other hand, my sister described, she, she really likes to describe my hands as like creepy doll fingers, like I have little doll hands. I don't think my hands are that small, and I've seen other people who actually think I have like much daintier and like more delicate fingers than I do. And I always, my cuticles are always peeling, no matter what I do. It's, it's a real problem. On a more serious note, though, a favorite book of mine, A Nell's Ghost. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you probably heard me at least bring it up once because I've done it. I This is probably the third time, maybe the fourth time I brought it up. The character, A Nell, she's a forensic archaeologist. There's a part in that book where they sort of read the bones to decipher a corpse's occupation. The plot twist is that there are fresh bodies mixed in with, like, an archae archaeological dig. So, like... These old bodies mixed with new bodies. Some, something's afoot. <laughs> but anyway, through the patterns of the wear and tear on the bones, that's how they decipher like what this person did while they lived. And I thought it was beautiful to me. It was, it was beautiful. It was very eerily beautiful. I don't know if they do that with modern corpses. I doubt it because they don't really have a reason to. You can just like fingerprint and get on with it. I'm experimenting with angles now that I'm more comfortable with rendering anatomy. Angles are considered masculine and to convey aggression in some instances. I, from the Kibbe body typing system, am a flamboyant gamine. I thought I would be a soft gamine, but it turns out I'm too angular in some ways. To summarize it, I'm short and narrow. That's the first thing you'd observe if you looked at me, but at the same time, because I'm so thin, my limbs look rather long. So without context, you might think that I'm taller than I am, which I personally take pride in because once upon a time, I was only five feet even, and now I am five one, half an inch. I stretch a lot. Like, I really, if I could go back in time, I would convince my mother to let me do gymnastics or like contortion or something. I really... I really love that level of flexibility. It feels crazy. It feels amazing when you can, like, really, really, like, do some weird shit with your body. Like, the endorphins of it. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going off. When I researched, like, how it is that people become flexible, and it's a matter of, like, pain tolerance. Like, because I was like, naturally, your body's not meant to do these things. But, like, as you push and you push, your muscles tear. You know, that's part of exercising. But when they regenerate, there are a lot more there. So, therefore, your body can do more. And I like to think I have a great pain tolerance. At least that's what I've been told is that I'm I'm pretty durable. <laughs> Where
where was I? What was I getting to? I'm rather, I'm rather, um, balanced in yin and yang, masculine and feminine. I looked up celebrities to grasp my body type better. Other flamboyant gamines are not Kareem Bailey Ray. I think she's too tall. I think the cutoff for a flamboyant gamine is 5'7". And she appears to be taller than that. I don't know. I've never Googled it. But I doubt she's actually a flamboyant gamine. She's probably a flamboyant natural. It was my first thought since she has that lyric. FK Twigs is a flamboyant gamine. Lily Rose Depp. There's a lot of contention on Reddit whether or not she's actually flamboyant or soft. But a lot of people feel she's flamboyant. Zoe Kravitz. Emma Roberts and Kiernan Shipka. Anyway, I think I'm portraying my own body in a way in my most recent, like, uh, full body renderings. Clearly not the ones that are, like, super distorted. I think that's, like, I, I, maybe I'm embracing myself in a way by by depicting myself. You know, at, at my at my age, when I've come full circle, and I had, I had done it in the past, but not necessarily in this way that's so dynamic as you'll see in my next video i'm so excited for you to see that one please watch it next week um but i've come full circle from my diabetes body how i was before i was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when i was 18 although i was experiencing like really severe symptoms of ketoacidosis when i was 17 so that's probably when i actually became diabetic i was hospitalized and such so now that I'm 23 I'm really back where I started which was barely 100 pounds keeping to my theme of a sort of semi-series this has no eyes well this has eyes but no face to focus on and a head but no face yet it it does actually have a face it's just looking at itself so you perceive it doesn't have a face I should have said that before now that my faceless creature beings with like they do they do have heads but their faces are facing themselves and like ugh, ugh, oh well if you take anything away from this it is art and art goes on so i will in my next video thank you See.